Welcome back to another fictionalhead.com essential training. This series is dedicated to topics that I feel are essential to understanding the software we use every day as designers. Uh, today's essential training is for InDesign and it's on understanding the sort of benefits of the transform, align, and pathfinder. Um, and I bring those three up together because they're always lumped together under object and layout. Um, and they really are sort of the trifecta of everything you would need to do in usually both Illustrator and InDesign. And generally speaking, a lot of people don't have them open, which is really weird to me. But I would suggest having all three of them open um, and just sort of getting to understand uh, sort of the key benefits of using it, any of them. So for Transform, sort of the real benefit of Transform is that you can immediately see where on the page with X and Y where anything is. Um, it'll also tell you the width and height of anything, but then it also provides this bounding box, which is relative to any actual effect or anything that you do to it. So I know a lot of times you'll, when you're designing, you might want, say, let's just make this half of the page, make this the page size here. We'll get that image out of there. Um, if I wanted to add 0.25 inches of bleed off the edge here, I could try to like eyeball it and do that. Or if I wanted this to be five inches or half an inch bigger, I could try to drag it out or resize it. But when you have the transform palette open, you can actually just do simple math in here. So if I want it to be 0.5 wider, I can just type plus 0.5 and it'll, or sorry, height. This box is turned sideways, apparently. The rotation is at 90. Okay. So if we add plus 0.5, it becomes 0.5 wider. And you can see that the reference point was the middle, so it popped out from both sides. If I were to set the reference point to the side and say plus 0.5, it pushes 0.5 out that way. Same thing if I divide it by 2, it goes that way. Um, I know you can very quickly set up grids on anything that you're working on by just making your make a box the full size of the document and then maybe you divide it by three and then just drag those two out and boom, you've got a perfect three column grid. You know, maybe you're doing a trifold brochure and all, already you've got something like that set up. Um, if you ever want to make something like half the height of the page, same thing, just switch it to the top. Um, anytime you use any sort of transforms, such as rotate, shear, any of that stuff, um, it's going to use those values from the reference point. So you can see that it's rotating from the top center here per this reference point. Whereas if I move it to the middle and I decide to rotate it, um, it rotates from the center. So the more that you can sort of familiarize yourself with the bounding box and what effects you're trying to do relative to your content, you'll be surprised how quickly the math will come to you if you're like, oh, I just want three columns. Oh, I want to take this image but make it half as big. Um, all of that sort of simple math and stuff works as you would expect it to. Um, you know, multiply by 0.5 is times asterisk 5. Uh, you can do multiplication, division, subtraction, and addition. Um, if you've ever had something where you go to do, I'm not sure if I can get it to um, do it. But if you've ever had it pop up and say doing that would cause the image to leave the pasteboard, I think we've all seen that error before and you're kind of like, why? Or here, this will get it to happen. So if I try to reflect this, it says this value would cause one or more objects to leave the pasteboard. A lot of people are usually like, what the hell does that mean? It means that I've got the right side of the box selected here as my trance, as my reference point. So if this side over here is my reference point and I try to mirror it, it's going to cause the whole object to go over into this gray space, which InDesign won't allow. So if you ever have something like that, just realize you just have some setting checked that's going to biff the calculation. Just switch your reference point back, back to the left side. And now if I do transform and flip it, it flips just fine. Um, and there can be any number of reasons for that. Sometimes you try to paste things off of the pasteboard 
or flip or rotate or anything. All of that can be corrected by using your bounding box here. Um, it's also up here. It just is a little more handy on the transform palette. Um, as for the align tool, that really is just like the most useful thing in InDesign. So I would get used to using it if I were you. Um, it very quickly can align things to the horizontal center of the page, the vertical center of the page. Um, you can have multiple objects and space them evenly between each other, space them evenly between the page. Um, you can toggle here if you want it to align to the page or to the selection, which is another super helpful thing that lets you space out this way. Um, same thing with vertically. You can stagger things. You can just group stuff to treat it as a similar element. So if all those things are grouped and you space, they space together. Um, if you align them to the page and distribute them, it'll space them out as individual chunks. Um, it really is like what you do as a designer all day long, just turned into a tool. So if you've never gotten used to using the align tool, I mean, get in there, get used to it. You'll probably find yourself using align to center um, the most, so horizontal and vertical centers, but the distribution options are also very helpful. Um, to distribute vertical centers, uh, distribute horizontal centers, and distribute spacing. Just remember that anything you do, um, you usually are jumping between selection and page. If you're working on a document that has spreads, you might use spreads, but usually you design within the context of a single page. Um, so really, the align tool is sort of infinitely helpful. Uh, the Pathfinder behaves as you would expect from uh, Illustrator's Pathfinder, it's just not as good. Um, and this also kind of goes back to that point of what I've referenced before, the Jurassic Park theory of design. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. Uh, and that is very, very true here in InDesign. You can use the Pathfinder to do very basic operations like combine things, um, cut one out from the other, you know, minus front, minus back, intersection, merge, things like that. Um, but you'll find more often than not that it doesn't quite produce what you want. Um, and that's usually the case with InDesign just because of the way it treats vectors. I would suggest anytime you're going for anything other than just like a basic rudimentary shape to kick yourself over into uh, Illustrator, make your really complex paths, do whatever you need to do. Um, use your pathfinder here to do all your divisions and all of that stuff to make sure you've got exactly what you want and then bring that path back into um, InDesign which if you're using it as a content frame there's no problem with pasting content frames but if you're using it as content itself it should be a link um, but when you use the pathfinder it'll just give you an object that's a lot more accurate coming out of in or coming out of Illustrator. The InDesign one is functional. Um, it works fine for, like I said, making really basic objects if you want to flow some text inside of there or uh, knock out a part of a photo. I just wouldn't get too in love with it as far as um, complex objects go. It also doesn't have as many options as Illustrator. It's just not as far along, but nevertheless can be helpful for a lot of basic layout tasks. So transform, align, pathfinder, know them, love them, use them. It'll just speed up your life uh, to sort of jump around the page, especially if you start thinking of things a little more mathematically and a little less sort of free flowy and, you know, it looks like it's centered sort of thing, like actually just center it and then go from there. So that's the tip. If you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you want more of these types of videos, be sure to check out the others in the Essential Training Series. And as always, if you have questions or topics you would like me to cover, just let me know in the comments. See you next time.